day 15 of the Stuck at Home Photography Challenge. Wait, there was no 13 to 14. What happened? Stay tuned, I'll let you know. Hey gang, here we are, day 15 of the Stuck at Home Photography Challenge. Now you might've noticed there was no day 13 and day 14 video. Hey, I'm sorry. Life caught up to me a little bit. Last Thursday, I did a live stream for Olympus all about live composite. You can check that out right there if you haven't seen it already. Link is in the description below. And last Friday, I'm not gonna lie, I needed a day off, which brings up a great point. So first of all, since we are at day 15 now, I hope that all of you are still healthy, staying well, and of course, practicing your social distancing. It's important to understand that as much as photographers like myself push the idea of, hey, you should shoot every day, you should pick that camera up, you should use it, you should practice. Absolutely, that's kind of the athlete mentality. But some days, you just can't. Some days, life gets in the way. For me, honestly, I just needed a couple of days off. With all the craziness that's been going on, one of the ways that I've been coping is with my camera and with these videos because that way I'm busy and I have less time to think about everything that's going on. But I got to the end of the week and I just needed a little bit of a mental health break. Life is good, I'm here, I'm healthy, and I'm ready to keep this going. So now as I've already told you, I'm not gonna do videos every day this week. I'm gonna give you a theme. I'm gonna show you a video today which is a cool, fun idea that I, I actually first came up with this idea on an airplane, flying at about 30,000 feet and I was bored. I'll probably do another video either Thursday or Friday, but I will still be posting my Stuck at Home Photography Challenge photos on my Flickr profile, link is below. I'll be posting them on my Facebook pages, links are below. And beginning today, I'll be posting all the Stuck at Home images on Instagram. So please follow along. I still wanna see your images. If you haven't joined my Facebook group yet, I don't know what you're waiting for if you're watching these videos. That link is also below. So what do we have here? The theme for this week, people have been asking me all weekend, what's the theme gonna be? What's the theme gonna be? So for me, I love black and white, but I'm done. Seven days of black and white, that's enough. I'm ready for some color and I'm ready for some bright, bold color and some interesting color. I'm still sticking with abstracts. Your genre can be whatever you want it to be. That's okay, but for me, it's gonna be abstracts. And the theme this week is your refrigerator. That's right, your refrigerator. Things that you have in your refrigerator. In fact, you could take the pictures in your refrigerator and I can guarantee you that you will see some of my shots are gonna be taken in the refrigerator. But today, what I have lined up here in front of me are a couple of things. Number one, I brought down a few glasses, two glass ones, a round and a square. Also, two plastic cups. One is kind of diffused, and the other one is clear with some ridges. I have a bottle of water. I have, let's see, what flavor here? Pomkini Crystal Light Liquid, which is gonna work kind of like a food coloring, actually, is what I'm gonna use that for, and the ice maker in my freezer is broken. And would you believe I don't have an ice cube tray in my house? So I have these little plastic food Tupperware cups that I made these big ice cubes with, like you see right there. And the key to this is starting with the ice cubes in a cup. So I'm gonna work actually with this, oh, I forgot one of the most important things. My iPad, on my iPad, I have some various pictures. In this case, you can see it's a Boca background. These might look familiar. These are the images that I used in this video all about the DIY backgrounds on the LED TV screen. But today, I'm gonna work with my iPad. You could actually do this with an iPhone. You're not gonna have as much real estate. Or you could certainly do it with a laptop computer. Just be really careful since you're gonna be playing with water. So, I'm gonna set the iPad down on the table. I'll move these glasses out of the way since I'm not gonna use them right away. And I'm going to set the clear plastic cup down on top of the bokeh. A little bit off center because I'm not a big fan of that bright white one that you see there. And then going to take this first ice cube. And I may have to break these up. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But what I am going to do is open up my water, 
I'm from Pennsylvania, we say water, right? And I am going to just pour some water in there and start to melt that cube down. And just to see, you know, kind of how the water runs around it. I am working today with my Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III, and I've got the brand new 12 to 45 f4 lens on here. What's great about this lens is honestly it works like a macro lens. It focuses incredibly close. So basically, I am going to shoot down into this cup and start creating different patterns using the shapes in the cup with the water and the ice and using the colors that are behind it from the iPad. That's it. And I'm really just kind of focusing by moving my physical distance at this point. I've got the lens uh, pretty much racked all the way out to 45 millimeter. I am trying to get as close as I can and I'll tap the focus once. Okay, now it's in focus and now I'm just gonna move back and forth to find what part of the ice or the cup I want to be in focus. And I'm playing with things inside the cup, I'm playing with things outside the cup. Now just to dress this up a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab one of my RGB Lumies from Spiffy Gear. These are the ones that allow me to do different colors and also different brightnesses. And I wanna try and add just a little bit of accent color in here I think since we're working on this kind of gold yellow background, I'm gonna go ahead with blue light. That's it, and we'll kind of get the contrast there. Oh, I really like the way that blue is going through the ice cubes. Love it. Nice. That's it. Cool. If I wanna take one of these out maybe. Let's just see if we get a different kind of line there. In fact, I'm going to drink a little bit of water. Just to get more detail on actual ice here. Now it's a good idea to turn the screen brightness up all the way on your iPad, your iPhone, your laptop, whatever you're using. It's going to make it a lot easier for you to be able to shoot. You'll notice that I turned off the two background rim lights that I had because I was getting a little bit too much light from them impacting my scene. So I wanted to be able to really limit it to the colors that I'm playing with, with the Lumi and the iPad screen. Very cool, we're getting there. We're getting there. I'm gonna kill a little bit more of this ambient light. So it's gonna get a little darker here, but I wanna make sure that I'm getting as much as I can out of this background image. Neat. Hopefully you get the idea. A couple different cups, two plastic. The glass ones I didn't even use. I love the plastic ones. Some homemade ice cubes. Remember, all good photography is about problem solving, right? We've got some... Um, Palm, uh, palm teeny crystal light liquid for some coloring. I've got my Lumi, which is the RGB Lumi from Spiffy Gear, some water, and an iPad with a whole bunch of pictures that I got at stock photo agencies. If you use them abstractly enough, meaning if you cannot identify the picture, you could go to Google, click on the images tab, and use almost any image you find there as long as you cannot identify that image. If you do that, it's essentially what's called a derivative work and you're okay. If you're able to identify that image that you've used, then you're infringing upon copyright laws. So please, don't do that. So let's go ahead up to the office, take a look at what we got. All right gang, we are back in the office. I've got it narrowed down to six 
frames here. It may wind up being four when we're all finished, but you can see them on the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select all six of them. We're gonna open them up into Camera Raw and we'll go ahead and take a look and see how we wanna process these images, okay? All right, so as I always do, I am gonna select them all. I'm gonna hit 30 on the vibrance. I'm gonna go a little bit aggressive and hit five on the saturation today. I'll take my sharpening to 60, and of course we will do remove chromatic aberration, enable profile corrections. Neither of those two settings is really gonna have an impact on these shots. It's part of my system, it's part of my workflow, it's not having a negative effect, so I will continue that habit, right? And at this point, I am going to go back and select just the first image, go back to my basic panel in Camera Raw, and now I wanna see um, what's gonna happen. And you know, one of the things that I haven't shown you much throughout this challenge is the auto button. If you follow me, you know that I routinely teach the idea that auto is the four letter word for forget about it, right? Not a good thing. However, when I'm being creative and I'm doing abstracts and things that are outside the box, so this is not something that I would do for portraits, but I've learned that sometimes clicking on auto will surprise me and show me something that I had not anticipated. Not always, and I have no idea what's gonna happen when I push the button, but I will go ahead and I'll hit auto, and indeed, it lightens it up, but it really doesn't do anything to make the image particularly interesting. So as I go through each of these today, I'm gonna to hit the auto. We'll see if we get lucky on one of them and it sparks my interest in some way. But what I do wanna do here is I wanna see what's gonna happen if I play with that dehaze. Remember, one of the things that we've learned throughout this challenge, dehaze reacts aggressively to blue. Why is that? It's ideally designed for those landscape photos where you're photographing maybe like a mountainside or a valley and there's a lot of haze. Dehaze is gonna pull out that haze and return the contrast and the color to the shot. That haze has a lot of blue in it. So knowing that the dehaze filter is gonna react aggressively to the blue, that's where I'm gonna start. Then I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna grab my highlights a little bit and grab my blacks to really create some contrast. I am gonna go ahead and lighten the frame just a tad, mainly so that I can pull the blacks down even more. Now that I'm there, uh, and for some reason my vibrance and saturation are not up where they should be here. Let's bring those back up. In fact, I'm gonna take the saturation all the way up to 10. I love that blue, that blue there is just intense. We're gonna go into the hue, saturation, and luminance panel here. We're gonna grab the blues. We can't go too much further or they're just gonna turn into mush. But now I wanna hit the yellows and the oranges, and it's mainly the orange that I think, well, you know, maybe not as much as I thought. So I thought there'd be a lot more orange to play with there. But we're gonna really just juice those colors up, go to the luminance panel, and I wanna lighten the blue even just a tad more, and that's where we're gonna stay with that one. This second frame, we'll do the same thing that I said I would do on the others. I'm gonna hit auto, and actually, that gets me kind of in the ballpark of where I wanna be. Not exactly where I wanna be, but we'll see here. So 30, uh, we're gonna go 10 on the saturation. And again, because I know I've got that blue, I'm gonna hit that dehaze filter and put some detail in there, yeah. So I wanna bring my blacks down a little bit more. I am going to lighten the image a little bit. I am loving where that's at. Now this has a lot more color in it in this shot, right? So we can, we can really play with this hue, saturation, and luminance here just to see. And if you're not sure what colors you're looking at when you're first starting to learn how to do this, just grab a slider and move it. The default position is zero. So if you find it, oh, it's you know, the wrong color or you've done too much, just go back to zero and, and be done with it, right? So in the saturation panel, we're gonna bring the reds up a little bit. We're gonna bring the oranges up. Definitely pull the yellows up. I don't think there's any green in here. No, there's really nothing happening with the green, so I don't have to worry about that. Aquas, I don't think there's much going on. Blue, of course, we know there's some heavy duty blue going. There's some really cool purple and some magenta. So we're just gonna really hit those colors hard. In the luminance panel, I am gonna grab the blue. I'm gonna lighten it just a tad because I want it to glow, right? And then I'm gonna take my reds my oranges, my yellows, my purples, and my magentas, and I'm gonna darken them ever so slightly. Yellows, we're gonna pull them down even a little bit more. I want that blue to really jump and, and glow. All right, 
That one, done. Now, let's go back again for number three. This one, still got a lot of blue. We're gonna pull that dehaze up really strong. We're gonna grab the highlights and lighten those highlights because I want it to look like that, that white light is just kind of oozing through those ice cubes. Pull the blacks down for some contrast. Lighten the image overall just a little bit. And I'm imagining this one cropped square. That's uh, kind of part of where I see this going. But before I do the crop, let's go back here and we know we can pull the reds up, the oranges, the yellows, the blues even more, and the purples, and the magentas, right? And just like I did on the last one, I'm gonna turn the reds down, the oranges down, the yellows down. Now, I know some of you are gonna ask, well, how much? How do you know how much to turn it down? You turn it down to the point where you think it looks good. Done, that's it, right? I like that, that's pretty good. So now, let's go ahead and let's do a crop here. We're gonna go one to one, because I want it square. And part of what I'm interested in, you see this drop up here? Um, it's a small detail, but I kinda like having that drop right up in the corner, and that, boom, that's gonna hit right there. That's where we leave that one. We'll go back and take a look at this one. Um, I have mixed feelings here. Like, I kind of like that. But then I also kind of like the idea of making this, now actually, now that I see that, I don't like that horizontal. So this is gonna have to be a square. So the real question is, are we gonna go, um, hmm, no, not that. You know what, we may just, let's see here. Yeah, I think we're gonna go, I think we're gonna go square. Let's just see. Yeah, I think square is the key. Absolutely, okay. So, and then on this first one also, I think square is gonna be the key for this. And I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit. So you notice I'm only using a little bit of that background color. Really, I, I want it for an accent. This is all about creating the abstracts with the ice. That's, that's really what I'm trying to accomplish here. Um, so, image number four, this one for sure. We hit that dehaze, and this is gonna be all about getting things to glow. I'm gonna pull those highlights way up, and I'm actually gonna lighten the shadows just a tad here, but not much. Because now, if I pull those blacks down, see how it's almost, it literally it's like the ice is glowing? Uh, I, I absolutely love that. So, all the other colors that are in here, they're really not gonna matter much unless I lighten them. And I am gonna lighten them just a tad so that we see, you see, by the time I crop this down square, it's gonna be ever so slight amount of that, but that's okay. We're gonna do that, hit that blue even a little bit more, go back to the crop tool for one-to-one. -one. So these are gonna be Instagram ready square crops today. And we're gonna kinda center that one Boom, right there, okay. Number five. So we know this is gonna be another square one, but we're done with our, not that we can't use the dehaze filter, but we're done with that blue. So we're not gonna get as much of an impact. So just to give you an idea here, see it just kind of darkens everything up, it doesn't do as much. So now I'm gonna to look to the texture filter. In fact, here, let me lighten this just a little so you can see what the texture filter does. As I pull that up, see how I'm starting to get more detail in there? And then we bring the clarity in and boom. Now I'm gonna go ahead, let's get my exposure back to where it started. Whoops, not there, there, good. And bring my highlights up, bring my shadows up, take my blacks down. There we go. Lighten it ever so slight, cool. We can come back here, we can see what we can get out of this with reds. Uh, and we're gonna hit that saturation a little bit more. Done, now come back here. This is also, I believe, gonna be, actually, you know, this one, this may be an opportunity for a 16 by nine. Let's, let's see what we get here. And the key to making this work, I think, is gonna be that center right about there. Yeah, I'm gonna work with that. We're gonna do a little bit of dodging and burning on that, I think, for the next one. And here we go. Um, hit auto, you can see auto for these. I'm not, I'm not really liking the lighter version, even though I see more detail. 
I want it to be a little bit more mysterious. So bring my highlights up. Oops, get my saturation and vibrance in there as well. Um, again, we're going to pull the clarity up, which gives me more contrast. Pull the texture up, which brings some detail in. So the highlights are way up. Lighten the shadows up a little bit, but then we pull the blacks down, right? So we've got this interesting kind of greenish yellow going on, and of course we have the reds. So we know that we can saturate the reds. There's also some orange in there. You can see it glows a little bit more, so we'll hit the orange. We know we have yellow, we'll hit the yellow. There is, interestingly enough, some green. I want to make that green glow. See how I can get it to glow there? And uh, that's pretty much going to be it on the color spectrum here. But for the green, let's lighten it, really make it glow so it really jumps out. And the orange and yellow. All right, and then from the standpoint of a crop, so I can tell you right now, whoops, let's go to the one-to-one, -one, I think, for this. I told you not all of these images would make it to the final cut. I think this is going to be one of the ones that, whoops, that doesn't make it to the final cut. The more that I'm looking at this, um, I'm just not, just not digging this. But we'll go there with it. We'll open it. So I'm still going to work on all six of these since I've gotten this far with them, right? I, I might as well, might as well continue working on them. So let's go ahead and move them into Photoshop. All right, we are into Photoshop and there's not going to be a whole lot that has to happen on these in Photoshop. And this image in particular, got a little black spot there that I'm not digging, so I want to take that out. Uh, beyond that, I mean, these guys don't really need a whole lot of post-processing. I am going to put a levels adjustment layer on here, and I want to just try and get a little bit more pop to the highlights. Yeah, so I'm, I am actually liking that uh, a lot more. And then we'll do a dodge and burn layer. I want to make sure that black is my foreground color. And I will set that to the gradient tool so that it goes from black uh, to clear. And there we go. Just going to darken down those edges a little bit to really keep people's attention into those center cubes. There we go. And then that one is done. Next up here, for this guy, uh, I've got that same little black spot, so I need to make a retouch layer. I'm going to use my healing brush. I'm going to take that out. There we go. A uh, little reminder on the healing brush, a couple other spots here I'm going to take out, just can't, kind of can't tell what they are. 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, you want the hardness on your healing brush to be 100%. It's one of the few times in Photoshop that 100% is your go-to, and that's the healing brush, okay? Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and um, do a dodge and burn layer, use my gradient tool, and just kind of bring down these corners a little bit more. I want just a hint of the color, that's it. Bring down the very bottom a little, whoops, not liking that at all, let's try that again. Uh, bring down just the, the bottom just a little here, good. Set. And there it is. In fact, I'm also going to give this one, the more I'm looking at these, I want, I want just a little bit more pop with the contrast. So I'm using that levels adjustment and I'm bringing the whites up, bringing the blacks down. So it's just giving it a little bit more of a contrast boost. Cool. Next up, this one. And so I don't see anything that I feel that I need to actually... Yeah, no, I don't see anything I feel I need to do dodge and, or excuse me, uh, healing brush. So I'm going to go right to my dodge and burn layer. I'm going to burn down these outside corners, especially this bottom corner where all of a sudden it's kind of blue, because that blue down there I find distracting. Um, and there it is. We're going to stay right there. Next up. This guy, he's good. Uh, I'm going to put a dodge and burn layer on. I'm going to really darken those outside corners because I don't want that light area to pull the attention up. And um, just for the sake of it, let's try, let's try a levels adjustment on here and, and really pop that just a bit more. Yeah. Love it. Okay, so that's where we're staying with that one. And our horizontal one, this one looks like lava or something like that. It's kind of cool here. 
Uh, I don't see anything that I feel I need to retouch on this one. Well, actually, you know what? I do. So um, I'm going to grab my healing brush and I got a couple little, and these are just water drops. They're not dirt, but um, since they're not obviously water drops, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take them out. And a couple over here, same thing. Good. That's it. And let's hit uh, the dodge and burn here. So we really just want to darken this outside edge. We want to darken this edge. Good. Bring the top down a little. Good. And then I've got some detail from the iPad background that's right here. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the brush tool and create another dodge and burn layer. I, I always want the vignette to be by itself and a little bit more opacity. And we're just going to darken that area right in there. Just so that that little detail that's not ice and not cup doesn't show out as show up as much. So obviously the glow here is being caused by the Lumi, uh, not by the iPad. Okay. And then the last one, um, I don't know, you know, there's something like I like it and I don't like it. I'm, I'm honestly not sure. So let's go ahead and do burn down the corners like we've been doing. Um, I think I will still go ahead and hit this with uh, levels just to play with it just a tad more. Good. And then I'm going to go down and insert a layer right there above the background because I am noticing now as I'm getting further into this, this has got some of those water drops that showed up looking like dirt spots. So I want to want to take a couple of those out just to tidy it up a little bit here. There we go. Kind of a big water drop there that just looks like a black blob. We'll take that out. And that's about it. All right, so I've got six here. So there is this blue one here. This one here, which I think is my favorite in terms of the, the color schemes that go with it. Um, this one. Another favorite. This one, I love the, the, the drama in this because we've got the super, super rich blacks and the white whites. Um, this one here kind of looks like lava from something. And this one, I still can't walk away from it, but it's definitely not my favorite. Maybe it's because of the green. Green's not a, a favorite color of mine. I, I think that uh, for me, probably my favorite shot of the day today, it's definitely going to be this one. I'm, I'm definitely enjoying so that'll be my pick for the day. You can check out the full res images on my Flickr profile. Link is below. And of course, I'll be posting them on Facebook and starting today, Instagram. So remember, folks, this week, your theme is things that you find in your refrigerator. Maybe you take the picture in the refrigerator. Maybe you take the stuff out of the refrigerator and you photograph that. But your stay at home or your stuck at home photography challenge is all about your refrigerator. For me, I'm going to work in color. I'm definitely going back to bright, bold, intense colors because that's my thing. And I'm going to stick with abstracts. You don't have to do abstracts. You can do any genre you want. And honestly, if you don't feel like doing the refrigerator, that's cool. Challenge yourself. Do your own challenge for the week. But the point is, pick up your camera and shoot. Please stay healthy, stay safe, Practice your social distancing. Remember, I'm not doing a video every day this week, so to keep up with the challenge, join my Facebook group, link below. Follow me, Instagram, Facebook. You'll be able to see my images. I will be posting them every single day. I'll get out at least one more Stuck at Home Challenge video before the week is out, and I'm gonna be able to get at least one tutorial out for you this week. I really wanna get back to making tutorials. So, your turn. Go pick up the camera and shoot something, gang because your best shot, you know, it's your next shot. Adios.